All right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Jason Wright, who is just outside Dallas in Texas. How are you doing, Jason? I'm doing well, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and Jason's the founder of multiple companies with successful exits. And he acquired his first company actually at 28. Uh, I'm obsessed with self-improvement and helping others uh, reach their, as much of their potential as possible. Uh, you're the creator and host of the Jason Wright podcast, author of Push Play, uh, writer, subscriber-based newsletter, the Vitruvian Letter. Did I get that right? You nailed it. Yeah, I love it. And author of Stone Chisler, inspired by Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. And, and what we're going to talk about today is mindset and self-improvement. And uh, it's it's kind of a big topic at the moment. Like people are talking about mindset, all of the, you know, there's a lot of people talking about mindset constantly. But can I give, give me your kind of definition of what mindset really is, Jason? Essentially, it's the it's the understanding that wherever you are, whatever your benchmark is, there's always room for improvement. And I think that why it's so important to me, John, is I was a chronic fixed mindset. And and I'll use I'll just explain to the listeners in case they haven't studied this stuff. Like you said, it is a very popular topic these days. But essentially, this came from the work of Dr. Carol Dweck, Stanford researcher, who in studying students wanted to understand why some could pop back from adversity so quickly and others couldn't. What she discovered was most of them had either a fixed or a growth mindset. Mm. Those who had the growth mindset didn't look at the failure or say on an exam, on an exercise as reflective of them as being failures, but instead it was just a challenge and it was a moment in time. Whereas someone with a fixed mindset, something that I suffered from, like I said, for years and years, it was more identity based. And a lot of people with a fixed mindset, that is the biggest uh, problem is that they will, they will, kind of go the opposite of what Zig Ziglar used to say, which was, you know, failure is an instance. It's not an identity. Those of us who suffer from a fixed mindset, we will take that failure to mean that we are failures and either you're born smart or you're not, you're born fast or you're not. And so essentially what the whole idea of a growth versus fixed mindset is, is being able to realize that there's always for that 1% improvement day on day over day for that 37 X improvement over a year. And so that's basically the way I look at it. Yeah, no, that, that, that's really interesting. Great definition. And thank you for that. And, and it is, um, it, it is interesting the difference between growth mindsets and fixed mindsets. And I think that's something that a lot of people um, don't understand, but it definitely, I mean, you mentioned Viktor Frankl there. Uh, I mean, that's probably one of the greatest examples like that book of somebody who's able to transcend something just by having, having a, an open, a more open mindset, if you like. That's absolutely right, John. So the cool thing about understanding logotherapy and what Viktor Frankl brought basically to public awareness was that every time, even if you're in the most adverse of circumstances, which obviously he was having suffered through Auschwitz, he lost his wife mm -hmm. and his unborn child during the, uh, during the world war two, whenever, if you can find meaning in that moment, if you can find reason and even in the worst moments, and sometimes those are the best moments, it's not just some catastrophe that's, it's not just life raining down on you, but it's a moment that there is a purpose for. And if you can find that purpose and find your place in that moment of how you can improve, why is this happening to you and where do you fit in? Then you start to look at life as much more circumstantial and how you fit into the bigger picture than just this constant reacting to things happening. Again, it goes back to if you're someone with a fixed mindset, you think, well, life just happened to me. I wasn't born with the right, the right intelligence and the right geographic location with the right talents. But if you're someone with a growth mindset, you realize, okay, it doesn't matter what happens. I might not be a virtuoso at this given task and I might not exceed at this task, but let's just find out what I can do to improve in this moment, in this adversity, in whatever it may be. And you're exactly right. That's one of the things that made Viktor Frankl so remarkable was that no matter what was what was thrown before him, he would find a way to find his purpose and meaning in that. So it definitely plays into that growth mindset. 
No, absolutely. And and I think it's challenging for people today, and I'd get get your uh, insight on this, Jason. I think it's very challenging for people today because they're bombarded all the time. They're distracted all the time. They're bombarded with shortcuts, with easy, with everything. And and obviously in popular culture and all of that is like, uh, so it's... It's almost like the the world is telling you, no, 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 you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. Just, you know, just, oh, look over here. (laughs) Yeah, John, you bring up an incredible point. So right now with what's happening with social media, and let's just pick on Instagram for a little bit because it's an easy target. Instagram is an absolute paradise for someone with a fixed mindset because a fixed mindset is all about appearances. It's all about how I look. It's not about how I actually perform. It's not about how I actually learn and excel in a given task. As long as I look good and look, I was that guy. I I say this, you know, pointing the finger at myself. I'm the type of guy that if you see me on a ski slope, I'm going to look like I should be amazing. I will have all the proper clothing. I'll have all the proper gear, but I'm a terrible skier, man. I'm probably going to break something inside of 20 minutes. And so that's what this world is all about these days. It's not about reality. And, 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 and also we're living in a time where it is about the shortcut to the fame. It's shortcut yep. to the success as opposed to understanding the value of experience and the journey is what it's all about. The journey and learning and growing that's in it. And again, someone with a fixed mindset thinks if there's too much struggle, I must not be good at it. So therefore I must move on. Or if I look like I'm struggling doing it, then I got to get out. Whereas if you can develop a growth mindset and to where you could care less what it looks like, you don't care what people see. All you know is that you are there to grow. You are there to become better and win or lose. And that's the thing too, that's really, really cool. Like as I started developing a growth mindset, I realized that even in those quote unquote moments of loss, a business deal didn't go well. I didn't get the sell. I didn't crush the deal that I thought I would. Even in that, there is an education available to me should I take advantage of it. What can I do differently next time? How did that, that pain, that pain is great. Now I've experienced that and I can look back and go, wow, I lived through it. Let's do this again. It won't hurt as bad because now I've got some calluses due to that as opposed to running away from it. And most importantly, I don't, just because I didn't crush the deal, didn't get the sell, didn't buy the business or didn't get what I wanted on the exit, it's okay. I learned from it. That doesn't mean I'm a failure. It just means that this moment in time did not quite go according to my plan. And if you can get your mind around that, then it just makes life, it makes it more fun. It makes you enjoy the journey. And the cool thing about it is, and this is what Carol Dweck learned whenever she was evaluating all these students, they were able to game different things. They looked at challenges, whether it's a test, a puzzle, or something like that. They didn't look at it as a do or die, zero sum game, or I'm either really good at this or I'm stupid. They looked at it as, oh, bring it on. This will be fun. This is a challenge. And when you can start to game more challenges in life, then it just makes life that much more fun. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And an interesting point that you just made there, I think, is it's sometimes I don't think. I don't think people look back enough, and I don't mean looking back like indulgently, but look back on exactly what you said about the things that they have overcome and the, the things that they have achieved. And because anytime you go through that exercise with anybody, because uh, I did it recently with somebody who was like trying to put a resume and stuff together, and I was going back and I was saying, oh, look at all the amazing things and the experiences you've had and everything. And they were like, well, I never really looked at it like that. And I said, exactly, you never looked at it like that. But there is evidence that you can succeed in your it's one. John, you nailed it. It's one of the first things that I have people do that I'm coaching toward a growth mindset. As I say, first of all, go look. I'm going to prove to you right now that you do have the ability to improve. There was a time where you didn't know how to read. There was a time you did not know how to do basic mathematics. There was a time you couldn't walk. There was a time you couldn't tie your shoes. Those are all, as as small as they seem, those are things that once upon a time in your mind were impossible for you to do, yet you did them. And you're exactly right, John. If you can show people the artifacts of their life where they have, in fact, taken on challenges that at one time were impossible. Mm -hmm. And they overcame them. And now you can just build upon that evidence. Every single one of us has evidence. And here's another thing, too, that I just want to make sure that we cover with regard to this fixed versus growth mindset Mm -hmm. that a lot of people miss. And it's because we we, we tend to think of this as performance, right, about being a better performer, being a better entrepreneur, whatever the case may be. Yes. I think one of the things that it will do to you if you have a fixed mindset is it it will compromise your integrity. Because what you think is, if I my if my talents and gifts are fixed, 
and I've reached that ceiling, then the only way for me to exceed it is to do something like steal, cheat, lie, embellish, and do a lot. And like that, that person at work that gets really mm -hmm. pissed off whenever they see someone else succeed, yep. that's the person that's got a fixed mindset. And the thing is, it can be disguised. There are so many people out there that are really, I, that's who I was. I was a high performing fixed mindset person. I was really in, I had this inferiority con and I wouldn't do the lie, stealing, stealing and cheating. I was a very, you know, moral guy, but nevertheless, I would find myself trying to really just getting crushed if I didn't do well enough now. And, and, and so if you're not careful, having a fixed mindset will not only compromise your actual, how well you work and enjoying the journey, but it will compromise your integrity. I always use uh, kind of a, a fictitious account of a proverbial fixed mindset is George Costanza from Seinfeld, oh, yeah. you know, calling himself art Vandalay, you know, don't no, I, I'm an architect. I can't be an architect. No, you're just George. Just be <laughs> freaking George. But he, he always lied about his SAT scores. That was one of the, fa the funny episodes. He tried to take the IQ test. I use that as an example. And of course, it's like George Costanza's life was so miserable because he was always, he, he had this fixed mindset when, and, and he didn't have to, and he, and he would lie. He would say, as long as people think that I'm smart or they think I'm an architect, I'm okay. And so that's, that's where we have to be, be careful with this fixed mindset. Yeah. And, and, and the other part about the fixed mindset too, Jason, as, as uh, uh, is that part is where you, where you feel that if somebody else achieves something, then that's something that's gone for you, right? Exactly. It's that exactly. Whole, whole idea of like it being a finite pie and then Jason's just done something. Well, that's gone for me. I'll have to figure out something else. Yes. That is one of the things that makes a really, uh, if someone has a, a, a fixed mindset, they're, it's hard to work with them. They're hard to manage because they're constantly on edge. They're cost, It's a zero-sum game. Life is a zero-sum game, and it's miserable. And here's the thing, too. Let's talk about the fact that if you have a fixed mindset, you're not going to take challenges that you normally would. You just mm -hmm. won't. You're not going to be the person that will raise your hand and go, you know what? I will give this a shot, this project a shot, because especially if you're thought of as someone that's smart and brilliant and a high performer, you've always nailed everything you've done. If that happens, then you will probably miss out on a great deal of opportunities because when the, the, the higher the stakes, the greater the potential of failure. So the more you're going to pull yourself out. And so that can be a problem or, and then, then it leads to what you just said. So that leaves the door open for someone else to come along, be the star. And then you're just going to be pissed off because they're succeeding and you're not because you think it's a zero sum game. You think their success yeah. reflects on you as lesser than it's it's just mm -hmm. it's a terrible situation yeah and it's it's amazing how how much we uh how much our minds play tricks in but how much we put ourselves at the center of everything and we <laughs> imagine and we appropriate things all the time and i think that's another thing if you if you have that fixed mindset or whatever is that you tend to appropriate a lot of things like you just said if somebody comes in and does that then that's somehow reflecting on you whereas most people are probably not even don't even remember you were involved in the project to begin with Oh, brother, John, you're so right, man. I, I, I've told so many people that everyone else thinks so much of so little of us so frequently that we would really probably be kind of sad. I mean, <laughs> they're living their lives. They don't have time to go, you know, John's got this really <laughs> great podcast that dang, I'm so pissed. I want a podcast. You know, I've got so many great things to say. Uh, and you know, and I and I know John is thinking this about me. No, you're doing you're doing your thing. There, everybody's living their lives. We're not the centers of the universe that we think we are. <laughs> so, how can you, uh, Jason? What are some What are some of the first steps? You know, somebody listening or, or, or watching today, like what would be one or two things that they could do today to start this journey of, of self improvement, of like expanding their 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 orientation. So the first thing I would do is I would, I would have anyone stop and look at those areas of life where they feel like they are truly inferior. I don't care what it is and, and, and dig down into that and figure out, you know, where is that coming from? And let's just, I mean, the simplest place to do this, and this is, again, this is leaning on Carol Dweck again. What she always did was say, you know, the power of the word yet. I'm not good at this task yet. Mm. Okay. So, so the first thing you do, if, if, if whenever you do that kind of that personal inventory of those shortcomings that you have identified that you think you have, and you feel like they can't be overcome, if you can just say to yourself, 
you know what? I really like for me, I'm terrible with directions, John. My wife is like a honing pigeon and I get lost in a paper bag. Okay. And so if we're driving in a new city, like you mentioned, I, I live pretty close to Dallas. If we're in Dallas, I'll go, I'll say, you know what? I'm just terrible at getting around in this area. I'm just not good at this yet. And I'll mm. immediately pop back with whatever it's, if it's something that's meaningful. So I would start there. Another thing that I would do is I would do, like I mentioned earlier, look back on your life and, and, and look for those wins that you've already had. Every single one of us has become better at a thing at some point. There's never a time where we just, mm -hmm. we learned something and then that was it. It plateaued. We, we were stagnant. We've all overcome. We've all gone from zero to one in some element of our life. So prove to yourself that you've done that and then start telling, start taking on some challenges that no one else is going to see. Let's say that you've always wanted to play the guitar and you go, I'm just not musically inclined. I can't mm -hmm. do that. Go do it and just know, and don't let anyone see, just go, just go start doing these things and forget and, and get, and then get to the point where you don't care what the outcome is. Focus mm -hmm. on making everything a game for improvement, for learning, for getting better, for sharpening your skills. It's not, and don't even worry about the outcome. You know, I've got a guitar over here that I play like a five-year-old. I sound <laughs> terrible. I, I will never be a virtuoso on that guitar. But nobody hears me and I can at least pick it up and I can, as long as I can strum a little bit better than I did the time before, that's cool. I'm getting a little better. So that's the things that I would tell people. And, and again, always understand that no matter what you do in life, it, it don't own it as an identity. The things we do are just that they're things we do. They're jobs mm -hmm. we perform. They don't reflect who we are at our core as human beings. Yeah, no, and I think that's such an important point to make. I used to say to people who, when I when I manage teams and stuff, I used to say, "Listen, the first thing is don't get married to any of your projects, okay?" Because yeah. I said because one day I'm going to come along and tell you that the priorities have changed and that that six months of work that you put into that is now being pushed to the side, and we're starting something else, and you're going to have to like it. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You know, and what, here's another thing too, that I would say is very important. I learned this from Michael Gervais, you know, one of the best performance coaches out there. You know, a lot of people, they'll tell you that like, kind of, if you're going through that exercise of getting your mind right and self-talk mm -hmm. is incredibly important. A lot mm -hmm. of our mindsets come from self-talk, right? Yep. And so we hear a lot about, well, you know, really pump yourself up and, and tell yourself, you know, you can do this, you can do anything. Michael Gervais said something I thought made a lot of sense here recently. He said, you know, don't say anything to yourself that you can't prove. Right. In, in other words, if you're going to give yourself the self-talk, be able to prove it, be able to say, I've done this before. Like if you're a, if someone's a cancer survivor, if you go, look, I'm going to beat this challenge in front of me. And I know how, because I defeated cancer one time. Right. Okay. Yeah. You have, you have artifacts artifacts that say, look, I know, but if you're someone that's saying, no, I am going to, you know, get this job no matter what. And you've never even worked in the industry. You have no idea what you're doing and you're just desperate and you think you deserve it. No, don't, don't lie to yourself because our brain knows, make sure you match your self-talk with something that you can actually prove you've done. And if you do that, it has so much more power. And then that will start getting you into this growth mindset of being an overcomer, of being able to take on those big challenges and have success because you're matching past success with, with potential of your future. Yeah. And obviously the inverse of that is when you just start using everything as evidence that you're a failure. Right. Please. Exactly, man. And don't we do that to ourselves? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And th th you have a great point there, John. I mean, you know, whenever you find yourself in these moments of thinking that, and I do this, man, I just beat the crap out of myself sometimes. And what I've started doing is I'm like, okay, would I ever speak to my closest friend like this? Right. If I had a close friend that was struggling with a challenge, be it at work, in a relationship with their children, whatever the case may be, would I ever speak to a friend the way I speak to myself? And most of us wouldn't. So you're, cause you're right. We will believe the absolute worst things about ourselves because our brain, our brain's there to remind us, Hey, don't try this for yeah, someone. Yeah. Don't try this. You might not be good at it. And back when in our, back in the day on the Serengeti being bad at something could lead to your death. Right. Yeah. So our brain still has that in. It's like ancestrally, we're supposed to don't try the thing that you, unless you know, you're really good at it. And so you have to be able to talk yourself through those things. Yeah. So, I mean, so I, I think part of the takeaway here for people is to understand that 
a lot of the challenges that you're you're facing or that you think you're facing are originating in here. Absolutely. There's so much craziness that goes on between our between our ears. And that's one of the things that I, I tell people. And that's why I so I teach a, a course, Massively Transformative Habits. And it's one of the things I do, John. I start with mindsets. You've gotten, mm -hmm. you know, my favorite quote was from the uh the founder of Stoic Philosophy, Zeno. He said, He who conquers his mind conquers the world. And mm -hmm. I say that, man, as a neurotic, you know, cra you know, crazy person at times. It's <laughs> like I've realized that. When I can get my mind right, whenever I can learn to find a flow state, when I can learn to focus, when I can lear learn to not have those self-limiting beliefs and truly tap into that 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 magic that is humanity that we all have in this brain, we are this prefrontal cortex that we have that the other animals don't is a pretty magical thing. Mm -hmm. And when you can start to control this for the good and for the positive, brother. It's unbelievable. It's it's amazing. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. What fantastic insights you shared today. Thank you so much, Jason. All of Jason's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah. So essentially what I do at this point in my life, I used to buy and sell businesses and now I'm just trying to help people improve always and always. That's the motto of my podcast, the Jason Wright show. I do personal coaching. I have the Vitruvian lab app that you can download in the Apple store that I'm, I'm developing as a way to scale, to help more people as opposed to just doing the one-on-one -on -one coaching, which in executive coaching, I do a lot of, um, I started the coaching because instead of running businesses, I heard that Peter Drucker once told Jim Collins, you can either run a world-class business or you can help others run theirs, but you can't do both. Mm -hmm. And I've decided at this point in my life, I really, really love helping leaders who want to do more, not just with, you know, with their mind, their body, their, and, and scale in a positive way and, and just really reach that mastery and that peak performance of this human experience. That's what I try to help people do. And, uh, and those are the things I talk about on my podcast and the books I write. I try to convey that. So that's what I've got going on. Excellent. Excellent. And I would, uh, I would encourage you to go check out Jason and, and check out and consider coaching, right? I, I say this all the time, Jason is like, we, we invest money in our hobbies. We, you know, if you're a golfer, you probably like have a golf coach or something. Um, but we don't invest any money in the thing that puts bread on our table. Right. So it's crazy. I'm big, big encouragement, like go find a coach, go find a mentor or whatever and invest in yourself. Yeah. And if it costs some money, invest in yourself, because if you're not going to invest in yourself, why would you expect anyone else to? Man, that's so true, John. And one of the things that I try to do, you just mentioned there, especially for young entrepreneurs, look, I've made all the mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, I guarantee you there's no fee I can charge you. There's no retainer fee that's going to be as expensive <laughs> as the money that I can save you from not doing some of the stupid things I did when I was 28 and bought my first business. And, <laughs> and so, yes, having that coach to be there alongside you and encourage you and say, hey, I think about that. Yeah. It, it's something we take for granted. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and we need somebody independent who's their only focus is just on helping you. They don't have any baggage. They don't have any other connections. It's just to help you. That's right. So well, listen, thanks again, Jason. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah.